Greetings, friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sarsavelic, and welcome. This is the third installment of our program on Christmas myths. Indeed, we mentioned in the last program that apparently the practice of Christmas caroling also has its origin in Saturnalia. And here is the, uh, here is the quote from our source that approves and, 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 and approves that what, what we say is true. It was published on www.assortment.com slash Christmas-pagan-origins. Anyway, it says, In ancient Babylon, the feast of the son of Isis, goddess of nature, was celebrated on December 25th. Ruckus, ruckus parting, gluttonous eating and drinking and gift-giving were traditions of this feast. In Rome, the winter solstice was celebrated many years before the birth of Christ. The Romans called their winter holiday Saturnalia, honoring Saturn, the god of agriculture. In January, they observed the calends of January, which represented the triumph of life over death. This whole season was called Dies Natalis Invicti Solis, or the birthday of the unconquered sun. The festival season was marked by much merrymaking. It is in ancient Rome that the tradition of the mummers was born. The mummers were groups of costume singers and dancers who traveled from house to house entertaining their neighbors. From this, the Christmas tradition of caroling was born. In Northern Europe, many other traditions were that we now consider part of Christian worship were begun long before the participants had even heard of Christ. Indeed, because Europe is the basically continuation and even the cradle of paganism or and also cradle of the nominal Christianity. Now, the last, uh, uh, the last sentence in this in this excerpt says the pagans of northern Europe celebrated uh, their own winter solstice known as Yule, Y U L E. Yule was symbolic of the pagan sun god Mithras being born. Friends, we mentioned already in the last program, and we will repeat it now, that many practices that people associate with Christmas came from pagan holidays. The 12 days of Christmas originally came from the 12 days of Yuletide, which began at sunset on December 20th, known as Mother Night, and ended on the night of December 31st, the night of the Oak King and the Roman day of Hecate. The dates were later moved by those who keep Christmas indeed. And here is a quote from another historical source, and this is 12 Nights of Yuletide, Nordic Wiccan, published on December 5th, 2000. 14. Yuletide. Indeed, Yuletide is perhaps the greatest of all heathen holidays. It's a time of celebration and close family contact that lasts 12 days and nights, each of which can be viewed as a month of the preceding year in miniature. Many of the customs associated with Christmas actually began from heathen Yule rites and customs. Many gods and goddesses are honored during Yuletide and most Asatruar believe that they, as well as the spirits of the earth and our ancestors, all join us for the celebrations. All are our kith and kin, after all. There are many traditions and practices that are traditional to the month of Yule. The most well known is, of course, the 12 days of Yule. Some heathens may simply book and Yule with Mother's Night and Twelfth Night and not have specific observances in between those days, there are some other heathens who have taken things a step further, pulling inspiration from the nine noble virtues and combining it with candle lighting celebrations like Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, they have come up with a reason to light a candle every night during the Yuletide. The altar on Yule should face north, the area of is decorated with holy and mistletoe, and dried leaves and fruit such as hips and haw, H-A-W, a chalice of appropriate wine, mead or cider, the oak of, or pine log with up to 13 green, white and red candles decorated with carvings, runes or symbols is placed centrally on the altar. So this is from the 12 Nights of Yule, Nordic Wiccan, December 5th, 2014. You can find this article on internet. So don't be lazy, friends. Research what you keep, what you have taken for granted to be a Christian holiday, but it is not. Now, faithful early Christians were not keeping the 12 days of Yuletide. 
many of which practiced coincided coincided actually with Saturnalia. So Yuletide coincided with ancient pagan Saturnalia that was one of the most popular uh, Roman holidays. I already mentioned Jimmy Akin. He further wrote, quote, Today many authors like Chris, link Christmas with the birthday of Sol Invictus, that is, the sun god Sol, which was nicknamed Invictus, or the Unconquerable. This was celebrated on December 25th, but we have no early Christian sources saying we decided to celebrate Christmas on December 25th to compete with Sol Invictus. End of the quote. That means that the idea is sheer speculation, not something that we have evidence for. It is not even good speculation, because the only thing the two celebrations have in common is the date, but that doesn't mean one is based on the other. First, it needs to be understood that Sol Invictus is Mithra, the sun god worshipped by Emperor Constantine the Great. And here is from the, uh, from the book Klaus M., entitled The Roman Cult of Mithras, uh, published by Taylor and Francis in 2017, page 117. Quote, Roman Mithras is the invincible sun god Sol Invictus. This is the burden repeated a hundred times over of the votive inscriptions for, from the 2nd to the 4th centuries AD, whether in the form Sol Invictus Mithras or Deus Sol Invictus Mithras or Deus Sol Mithras or Sol Mithras. There do not seem to be any significant regional or temporal variations among such formulae. In the very earliest epigraphic evidence for the Roman cult of Mithras, the god is already invoked as Sol Invictus Mithras. These facts are confirmed by the numerous votive offerings to Sol, Deus Sol, Sol Invictus and Deus Invictus Sol, which were put up in Mithraea. End of the quote. Many Roman Catholic authors rightly connect Sol Invictus Mitra with Christmas being December 25th. Notice the following again from the Catholic Encyclopedia on Constantine the Great. This Catholic Encyclopedia says, Constantine can rightfully claim the title of Great, for he turned the history of the world into a new course and made Christianity the religion of the state. It's easy to understand that many of the emperors yielded to the delusion that they could unite all their subjects in the adoration of the one Son God who combined in himself the Father God of the Christians and the much-worshipped Mithras. Thus, the empire could be founded anew on unity of religion. Even Constantine cherished this mistaken belief. Could not Sol Deus Invictus, to whom even Constantine dedicated his coins for a long time, or Sol Mithras Deus Invictus, venerated by Diocletian and Galerius become the supreme god of the empire. Constantine may have pondered over this, nor had he absolutely rejected the thought even after a miraculous event had strongly influenced him in favor of the god of the Christians. It's true that, he, that the believers in Mithras also observe Sunday as well as Christmas. Consequently, Constantine speaks not of the day of the Lord, but of the everlasting day of the sun. This is published in the book... Uh, entitled uh, Constantine the Great and by Herbermann C. and uh, Georg G. P. Dot. It's also published in the Catholic Encyclopedia Volume 4, Nihil Obstat, Remy Lafford Censor, and this is in Premature Plus John M. Farley, Archbishop of New York. It was published in 1908 in New York by Robert Appleton Company. Now, Mithraism to explain to you, dear friends, what it is, Mithraism, indeed, it's a pagan religion consisting mainly of the cult of the ancient Indo-Iranian sun god Mithra. It entered Europe from Asia Minor after Alexander's conquest, spread rapidly over the whole Roman Empire at the beginning of our era, reached its zenith during the 3rd century, and vanished under the repressive regulations of Theodosius at the end of the 4th century. Helios Mithras is one god. Sunday was kept holy in honor of Mithra, and the six, 16th of each month was sacred to him as mediator. The 25th December was observed as his birthday, the Natalis Invicti, the rebirth of the winter sun, unconquered by the rigors of the season. We learn this from Arendzen, J. Uh, Mithraism, also from Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 10, 
Nikhil Opsak published on October the 1st, 1911. We also read it from, the, uh, all of this is from uh, uh, Robert Appleton Company, published in 1911. And uh, here is uh, it's from John Cardinal Farley, Archbishop of New York, and this was published in New York, all of this. As you can see, there's plenty of proof, plenty of uh, historical information that proved to us that Christmas has nothing to do with Christ Jesus, let alone the birth of Jesus Christ. The exact date of his birth we find no nowhere in the New Testament. The birthday of the sun god Mithras was what Constantine observed and he wanted his followers to observe, and it ended up getting officially adopted by the Greco-Roman bishops. Emperor Constantine became a highly devout follower of the sun god after he, he said he saw an apparition of the sun god Sol in a grove of Apollo in Gaul in 310. Now that's discussed in uh, the book of uh, Constantine Pagan Vision by Barbara S. Rogers and uh, it's uh, Byzantine volume 50 published in 1980 page 259 to 278 Constantine also observed the sun god Mithra's birthday on December 25th he also seems to have to be uh, to actually to have been instrumentally getting the greco romans to celebrate December 25th as Jesus birthday now here is one uh, quote from a article called why is christmas day on the 25th december published in 2015 on the internet it says the first recorded date of christmas being celebrated on december 25th was in 336 ad <coughs> during the time of the roman emperor constantine he was the first christian roman emperor supposedly i would add a few years later Pope Julius I officially declared that the birth of Jesus would be celebrated on 25th of December. The eventual choice of December 25th, made perhaps in early as early as 273, reflects on convergence of Oregon's concern about pagan gods and the Church's identification of God's Son with the Celestial Son. December 25th already hosted... Uh, two other related festivals, Natalis Solis Invicti, the Roman birth of the unconquered son, and the birthday of Mithras, the Iranian son of righteousness, whose worship was popular with Roman soldiers. The winter solstice, another celebration of the sun, fell just a few days earlier. Seeing that pagans were all the exalting deities with some parallels to the true deity, church leaders decided to commandeer the date and introduce a new festival. Western Christians first celebrated Christmas on December 25th in 336 after Emperor Constantine had declared Christianity the empire's favorite religion. Now all of this information was published by Kaufman E. Why December 25th? For the church's first three centuries Christmas wasn't in December or on the calendar at all. Now this is also, this all information was published also in the newspaper Christianity Today on August 8, 2008. The sun god worshipping Emperor Constantine, dear friends, succeeded in getting the Greco-Romans over time to mainly agree with his date, the date of the rebirth of the sun god Mithras. Jimmy Akin wrote, could the fact that December 23rd was the winter solstice have played a role in their celebrating it as Jesus' birth? Well, the answer to that is yes. While Jimmy Akin elsewhere also tries to point to December 25th as having a pre-solid Victus origin, the reality is that December 25th was previously also tied to pagan solstice observations. And yes, there are some other uh, things that Jimmy has written, and uh, we need to we need to basically uh, uh, perhaps take a look at that his calculation theory. We can just take a look at that in our next program. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your attention. Dear friends, this is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sashevedich, and until next time, goodbye, friends.